This Tucker Carlson tour has been insane, but he had J.D. Vance on stage with him, and he asked J.D. Vance about the the rhetoric, the heated rhetoric of the campaign, the, the tone of the rhetoric that's going on, and listen to what J.D. Vance said about rhetoric in the campaign and the negativity on both sides of the aisle. And I hate, by the way, when people both sides this issue, they're like, well, we all need to tone down the rhetoric. Well, look, by the way, I, I, I'm, I try to be a very humble person. I agree we can all tone down the rhetoric. None of us is perfect, including me. But when Donald Trump has taken two assassination attempts in the last seven weeks, it's not both sides that need to tone down the rhetoric. It's one side in particular. That is a, that's a fantastic point. When the rhetoric is so hot that one candidate is the target of not one, but two assassination attempts, not to mention the five active assassination teams that Matt Gates let us know about that are currently hunting Donald Trump. When that happens, yes, clearly there's more rhetoric negatively about the on one side of the aisle than the other. As far as we know, there have been no assassination attempts against Democrats. So the rhetoric on the right is clearly nowhere near as bad as the rhetoric on the left. And that's something that you really need to take into account. When you're talking about toning down the rhetoric, you have to start with the party who is not just saying negative things about a candidate, but saying negative things about a candidate that inspire other people to violence. That's a really important difference. You know, if I say you're stupid and you say I'm stupid, but then one of your friends tries to kill me, it's your rhetoric that's doing it, not mine. And the messaging on the left has been dramatically different than the messaging on the right. And the messaging on the left is not just, not just empty, not just devoid of any meaning, but it is angry and it is hostile. And it is, it is, it is untrue, most of it. That's the other thing, too. The, the people on the right will accuse Kamala Harris of saying or doing something, but the fact of the matter is, it's, it's, it turns out it's always true. Kamala Harris will accuse Donald Trump of doing something, something terrible, something horrible, something that people would hate something that might drive somebody to do something drastic. And it's all a lie. The good people on either side of the um, Charlottesville incident, for example, the Project 2025, the fact that Donald Trump wants to sign a federal abortion ban, which he does not, all of those are lies. In fact, the Democrats lie a lot. And to prove this point, uh, there was an interview with Senator John Fetterman from the swing state of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, a battleground state, and John Fetterman one of the most notorious, infamous, and famous politicians from Pennsylvania did an interview, and oddly enough, they were asking him about his flip-flopping stance on fracking. I know you've talked about this quite a bit. Vice President Harris, oh. as you know, once supported a ban on fracking when she was running for president in 2020. She even sued the Obama administration to prevent fracking off California's coast. Now she says she will not ban the practice as president why should voters trust that that is really what the vice president believes? It's so strange why we just keep talking about fracking. Now, back in 2020, I said that it, that might be an issue, but it's not going to be a defining issue. And now in 2024, we're still trying to talk about fracking. And now the other side, they're talking about eating cats and geese and dogs and saying absurd things and, and talking about how if Trump doesn't win, he said that, you know, you have to blame the Jews on that and just absurd things. You know, like having a, a serious policy conversation when the other side is just absolutely on fire and here's where we are but and here we are also that it's going to be very close in pennsylvania and it's not going to be defined by fracking uh, typically as usual john fetterman is ignoring or totally missed the point the question isn't about fracking the question is no one really cares about fracking what they want to know about is why were you for fracking then against fracking then for fracking then against fracking why was kamala harris a vehement fracking opponent why is she now embracing fracking? And why, Senator Fetterman, are you in the same boat? You're from Pennsylvania, a huge fracking state, and you flip-flopped on fracking as well during the during the debate with with uh, 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 what's the name, Doctor Oz. There was that famous quote: "I do support fracking, and I support fracking, and I and I do, and I and I support fracking." That was that was post-stroke. I guess, I mean, this is also post-stroke John Fetterman, but that was like immediately after the stroke. John Fetterman, when they threw that poor man on stage to debate Dr. Oz, somehow he still won. I mean, that's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing to me. Somehow he still won, but she pressed him on. She goes, okay, yeah, we get all that, but why now 
You're not answering the question. The question is, why are you flip-flopping? And John Fetterman once again refuses to or doesn't understand the question. In 2016, you called it a stain on Pennsylvania. In 2018, you said you don't support fracking at all. But then in 2022, you said you absolutely support fracking. Senator, what exactly do you like about fracking now? Uh, it, it's strange for some a weird gotcha kind of taking uh, quotes out of out of context. And you know, here I am now. I'm a United States senator, and I won by five points, a record margin back in 22. And again, it might be an issue in fracking, and I fully support fracking. So does the Vice President Harris. And now, if you want to have a serious conversation about policy, then I would challenge Trump and Vance to have one, other than talking about eating uh, pets. Which, by the way, they're actually doing. And the eating pets conversation is a deeper issue on immigration. The fracking situation is a deeper issue on you're a liar and you're a panderer and, you're, and you switch sides just to see, you know, whichever way the wind blows. You don't actually have any morals or values. You're just trying to get as many people in Pennsylvania to vote for you so you can return to power. And this whole thing he says about a guy, I don't understand, what do you say? He said, I don't understand what this is all about with these gotcha moments and trying to take quotes out of context, which is rich when the entire good people on both sides, quote, has been taken out of context for years to the point where Snopes, Snopes, one of the most liberal organizations in the world, had to say, guys, this is not true. Guys, Donald Trump did not say this. Guys, you are lying about the good people on either side. You're taking it out of context. And it is not, he did not say that. Um, but they continue to use it, not just in public, but in private, in on debate stages. And David Muir, the worst person in the world, just lets him, just lets him uh, get away with it. But John Fetterman, he's 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 trying to throw off the scent of the media. They know that Kamala Harris has no agenda items of her own. They know that she has no plan of her own. They know that she doesn't have any proposals of her own. Any plans and proposals she had, she's either stolen from Joe Biden or Donald Trump. And every like 14 or 15 policy decisions or uh, policy positions she has today are totally different than what she had before. And John Fetterman is trying to tell everybody, look. The Republicans are ridiculous because they want to talk about eating cats and dogs. To the point, what do you now like about fracking? You say you're not going to ban it. You support it now. Uh oh, <laughs> they're eating dogs. They're eating cats. <laughs> you know, uh, again. So okay. That, what, 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 just answer the fracking question. What are you doing? They're eating cats. The question is, what do you like about fracking? And he goes, huh, they're eating cats. They're eating dogs. So, okay. To the point, what do you now like about fracking? You say you're not going to ban it. You support it now. Uh oh, <laughs> they're eating dogs. They're eating cats. <laughs> you know, uh, again, so, okay. All right. Uh, so John Fetterman is has been pushed out there as a representative of Pennsylvania to talk about Kamala Harris and why she's a qualified candidate. And he still doesn't have the mental capacity to come up with whatever answers the spin room has determined they need to use. When talking about, fr they have no answer for fracking. The answer is, Kamala Harris was against fracking when she was a senator from California. Kamala Harris was against fracking until she became Joe Biden's running mate and they needed to win Pennsylvania. Then all of a sudden, Kamala Harris was for fracking. And now Kamala Harris is all about fracking because she knows that if she's not for fracking, she doesn't have a fracking chance of ever becoming the president of the United States. John Fetterman's the same way. He was all against fracking when he was living in his parents' basement and he thought it was just cool. Now he's a senator, and he wouldn't have been a senator if he didn't get up on that debate stage with Dr. Oz and say, I support fracking, and I do support fracking, and I support fracking. Now they don't have any answer for it, so their whole answer is um, they're, eating, they're eating cats and they're eating dogs. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. Eat the cat. Eat, eat the cat. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. Eat the cat. Eat the cat. Eat the cat. They're eating the cats. They're eating the dogs. Yeah, eat, eat the, the cat. cat. Eat, eat the cat.